Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We give God all the glory and honor and praise this morning as we come before him in praise and worship this morning. Praise the Lord, everyone. Just a few announcements uh, this morning. On Saturday, December the 11th, the Praise Dance Ministry will be hosting the church's annual children winter coat giveaway. Anyone who would like to donate new coats, hats, scarves, or gloves for girls or, boy, or boys, these items will truly be appreciated. There is a need for girls' coats, sizes 7, 8, and 10, 12. We also need boys' coats, size 10, 12, and 14, 16. Please contact the church office or the Praise Dance Ministry at 215. 424-6721. See Mrs. Anita L. Hamilton for more information. Amen. Amen. I'd like to once again thank everyone for your stewardship and tithes and offering. We thank you so much for your stewardship and tithes and offering. And you can continue to send in your tithes and offering to 6113. North 21st Street, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, 19138. We thank you so much for your stewardship and tithes and offering. I'd like to remind everyone about our prayer service call every Wednesday at 6 p.m. Wednesday at 6 p.m. And you can join in on that on the prayer service by dialing in at 605. 313-4159 and the access code is 713377 pam I'd like to remind everyone also as well as our Bible study class on, on Thursday evenings at 7 p.m. Our Bible study classes are on Thursday at 7 p.m. and you can join in with the class by dialing in at 607-374-1117. And the access code is 442162-POUND. And I'd also like to remind you about our Sunday school classes. We have three adult classes. Uh, to get the information to join in for Sunday school classes that start at 9 a.m. every Sunday morning, you can call the church office. You can call the church office at 215-438-1060. God bless you. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord.
Germantown, located at 6113 North 21st Street, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, 19138, serving the community for 120 years. Amen. You can be found on Facebook at Corinthian Baptist Church of Germantown, as well as YouTube at Corinthian Baptist, the purple circle with the white letter C. At this time, we'd like to welcome our pastor-elect, Pastor Robert Solomon. Thank you. 
course we pray. Father Lord, Lord, we ask you in the name of Jesus that you inhabit our prayers this morning. We are left to be you, Holy Spirit, into our worship experience.
this from verses 18 to 24, chapter 5. I wait for everybody to get it. Everybody will say amen. Uh, Genesis chapter 5, verses 18, 18 to 24. Amen. 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 Chad was 162 years old when he fathered Enoch. Chad lived 800 years after he fathered Enoch, and he fathered other sons and daughters. So Chad's life lasted 962 years, then he died. Enoch was 65 years old when he fathered Methuselah. And after he fathered Methuselah, Enoch walked with God 300 years and fathered other sons and daughters. So Enoch's life lasted 365 years. Enoch walked with God, and he was not there because God took him. And that's Genesis from 18 to 24. Now I'm going to be reading from Hebrews. Go to the book of Hebrews. Chapter 11. Verses 1 through 3, also verse 5. Let me know by saying amen. 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 Okay. Living by faith, that's the title of the chapter. Now faith is, is the reality of what is hoped for, the proof of what is not seen. For by it our ancestors won God's approval. By faith we understand that the universe was created by the word of God, so that what was seen was made from things that are not visible. Verse 5. By faith he not was taken away, and so he did not experience death. He was not to be found because God took him away. For before he was taken away, he was approved as one who pleased God. And that's the word of God from the book of God.
get our free sermon and little sermon tidbits. But I just want to remind us afresh that we gather because God desires to dwell and to tabernacle with his people. God, God loves us so much that yes, he can and he does interact with us personally at home on our jobs in our prayer closets but I'd like to suggest to you that one of the things that one of the reasons why so many of us were so excited about when will we get back to church again when will we gather together when, when is Corinthians going to open up again part of that reason why for many of us is because there's something special about when we all get together in one place on one floor and God still to move from heart to heart and from breast to breast. And so I just want to remind you that God doesn't just want to visit us. He doesn't want to just give us a visitation. You know, a visitor comes and then they go. God wants to make his habitation with us. He wants to be at home with us. He wants to be our God. And he wants us to be his people. Because we are. Through Jesus Christ. We are God's people. And when we realize that, we will begin to praise him. But we realize that, that there's something more going on than what I can see with my natural eye. Yes, yes y'all look good. We have one of the most beautiful and best dressed churches in the city. And I, I admire the, the beauty that we all possess. But as wonderful as it is to see you all, I want to see him. Yeah. How about you? All I want to see you. You want to come with me? Yeah. Man, it's been forever. I'm just saving grace. On the streets of the Lord. Huh. Care's on back. On back.
And so, Lord, we ask that you would have your way. Have your way, Lord God. Have your way. And we'll be careful to give your name the praise, the honor, and the glory. All these things we ask in Jesus' name. And for his sake, we pray with thanksgiving. Let us all say, Amen. 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 And Amen.
go to college. Everyone's excited about their future. The best of times. Then a month later, you discover that this same child has been arrested for possession of drugs and may be kicked out of school. The worst of times. You've worked hard to, to climb the corporate ladder and now you have the promotion and salary that you always wanted. The best of times. But your intimacy with your spouse and your relationship with your children has fallen apart because you don't ever have any time to spend with them. Now your spouse is filing for divorce and your children ain't trying to hear nothing you've got to say. The worst of times. There's a family member that you've been praying that God would turn their life around. You knew that if they kept doing what they were doing, how it was going to end up. And God answered your prayer. I said, God answered your prayer, y'all. The best of times. Then you received a phone call saying that this same family member was tragically murdered just when you thought they were coming into their own. Right. The worst of times. Mm -hmm. Y'all want to help me preach this morning? Yeah. Reality TV shows give us looks close up at some of the lifestyles of the rich and the famous. We, we hear the success stories of young people from the ghetto who go from rags to riches. The best of times. But when we take a closer look at these same so-called success stories, we discover that some of them got this wealth on the backs of the poor. They, they exploit the cheap labor of poor factory workers in sweatshops overseas, paying them as little as a dollar or two dollars a day. I think that's the worst of times. Now, Dickie Lee, I don't know about you, but when I wrestle with what appears to be the contradictions of life in this world, I get mad and sometimes depressed. But perhaps some of y'all are more spiritual than I am, but when I try to wrap my mind around some of the stuff that we go through, it blows my mind. And maybe others of y'all are closer to God than I am. But there are times when I'm tempted to quit. Amen. Now, when I say quit, I'm not talking about committing suicide or trying to escape reality through drugs or alcohol. I'm talking about, as a Christian, the temptation to stop living a life that pleases God just because of what I'm going through. Right. Have you ever been there before? Right. If you have been walking with God for any length of time, you understand that the drama, the stress, the trials and tribulations of life have the potential to either draw us to God or to drive us away from God. Amen.
in his lifetime. Amen. Right now. Is there anybody here this morning who wants to live in such a way that brings joy to God? What am I talking to you, y'all? God has lifted up the life of Enoch as an example of how to live pleasing to God in an unpleasant world. Anybody interested in taking a look at that this morning? Now, in order for us to discover who Enoch was, we have to go back to the book of Genesis. In fact, we need to read chapters 4 through 6 to get the full picture of the times in which he lived. Last week, we saw in Genesis chapter 4 that Cain had just cold-bloodedly killed his brother Abel, and God banished him from his presence. Y'all you remember that, don't you? And after God banished him from his presence, uh, Cain ended up settling in the land of Nod, which is east of Eden. And when Cain gets to Nod, y'all, the Bible says that he gets married and starts a family. He, he, he builds a great city and names it after his son. I, I wish I had time to teach on that because there's something powerful here. God gives this ex-murderer, this murderer, the opportunity to recreate himself. He gives him a second chance. And this former murderer now is an institution builder. And he is naming something after himself. But that's a different sermon for another day. He, he, he builds this great city. He, he names it after his son. His, his descendants become heroes, entrepreneurs, and icons as they bring forth inventions, start businesses, and introduce new technologies that improve the quality of life for everyone in the, in the area. And, and Brother Coley, they even had skilled musicians, y'all. And so, in the eyes of the world, the descendants of Cain were living in the best of times. Yeah. But when Enoch, y'all, looked at the same picture, he would have said that the days were the best of times and at the same time, the worst of times. Gangster rap. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> Come on, y'all, read your Bible. I said he's on the gangster rap, y'all. He, he's straight out of Compton. I mean, I mean straight out of Nas. <laughs> God. 
church of God needs to seek God's face yes. in prayer. Amen. Church ought to say amen this morning. Amen. That, that's why we've been having prayer vigils, y'all. Now, when I speak here about calling on the name of the Lord,
Right. Yeah. 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 Thank you. God wants to do yes. something to us. Yes. But God also wants to do something yes. through us. God wants to do something through us because faith without works is dead. Y'all come and help me preach this morning. So, when we go to God in prayer with a burden on our heart for a person or a problem, we must be open to the possibility that God may want to use us to be a part of the answer to our own prayer.
before y'all. Walk in the favor of the Lord. The, the Bible says on, on two different occasions that Enoch walked with God. And, and the reason that Enoch was able to please God because Enoch learned. Somebody say learn. Learn. Enoch learned to walk with God. Because to walk with God is to please God. Okay. It, it's the idea of living in a close friendship with God. Yeah. But it wasn't until after Enoch was 60 years old that it's written. Enoch walked with God. To put it another way, y'all, it wasn't until he was a senior citizen. It wasn't until he retired from his job that Enoch really learned how to walk with God. That, that's good news for someone this morning who thinks that you're too old to learn how to walk with God. Come on, church, church, say amen. Somebody say amen. Yeah. 
With God.
Jesus Christ. Is there one? We would love to have you. Become part of our family. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Call his name, church.
to run the race. Yes. yes. It is time for us to, as a church family, partake of the Lord's Supper. The Lord gave us two ordinances, two commands. One is what I like to refer to as the initiation rite. That's the ordinance of baptism. When we place our faith and trust in Jesus, we make a public declaration to the world that I am a follower of Christ. I am a believer in Jesus. And I, I believe in him so much that I will come out in public and identify with him in his death, burial, and resurrection by being immersed totally in water. And that initiation rite, that rite of baptism, that ordinance of baptism happens one time at the beginning of our walk with Christ. But the other ordinance of the church is the ordinance of communion. We call it the Lord's Supper. Yeah. And this ordinance is not a one-time observance at the beginning of our faith walk. But it's an ongoing remembrance. It's an ongoing observance so that we are constantly reminded of who Jesus is and what he has done on our behalf. Amen. And it's so important, it's, it's so transforming that when we identify with the holy by faith, it's like feeding our soul. On the night in which the Lord Jesus was betrayed, he said that dinner with his disciples. And after they, he took some bread and broke it, he said, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Let us eat together. After the meal, he took the cup and he said, this cup is the New Testament, the New Covenant through my blood. As often as you drink this cup, you do remember and proclaim my death until I return again. Let's drink together. And the Bible says that after they had eaten, after they had drank, they were not rejoicing, singing hymns to they went out to their mountain of olives. And we're going to go out in the same spirit that they're rejoicing, grateful for our salvation in Christ, for the forgiveness of our sins. For our justification, our sanctification, and the hope that one day we too will be taken up. If that's your hope this morning, let's stand on our feet. Let's sing one verse of this last hymn and consider yourself this list.